Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Radha from IET Bhattal. Today we are going to talk on module Organization Structure from paper Organization Behavior. In this module, we will learn what does organization structure mean? What is the need of organization structure? What are the features of a good organization structure? What are various elements and determinants of organizational structure? Organizational structure, it tells us about the character of an organization and the values it believes in. It is a framework around which the organization as a group is organized, the foundation which keeps it functioning. Structure describes how members are accepted, how leadership is chosen and how decisions are made. What is the need of organization structure? First is to divide and allocate work, authority and responsibility, we need organization structure. Then to ensure efficiency and effectiveness of activities in accordance with the common objectives of the organization. To establish working relationships and operating mechanism. To establish the means of control in the organization. We need organization structure to establish the patterns of management and supervision. To establish means of employee retention, that is retention of knowledge, experience and expertise. To give meaning and identity to the people who join the organization as well as to the organization itself. Organization structure is needed to specify the areas of responsibility, authority and accountability. To meet the expectations of the stakeholders. To provide the basis of fair and equitable reward system and structure also gives the group a meaning to maintain order and resolve disagreements. A good organization structure should have the following features. Simplicity, flexibility, clear line of authority, application of ultimate responsibility, proper delegation of authority, minimum possible managerial levels, principles of uh, unity of direction and command, proper emphasis on staff, Provision for top management. Let us discuss the features of a good organization structure. A good organization structure should be able to meet different needs and requirements of the business enterprise. So there should be certain features that it must possess. First is simplicity. An organization structure should be basically simple. The concept of simplicity implies that various organizational relations should be kept at minimum possible. Second is flexibility. An organization structure should be flexible enough so that changes can be incorporated whenever needs arise. The structure is designed for a long period of time. As such, permanence must be maintained in the organization structure over a period of time. Clear line of authority. Whenever the form of structure is adopted, there should be a clear line of authority running from top to bottom or in horizontal directions. Then there is application of ultimate responsibility. The concept of the ultimate responsibility suggests that although a superior manager assigns some of the work of his subordinates, he is ultimately responsible for performance of the total work. Then there is proper delegation of authority. The concept of ultimate responsibility can work only when there is proper delegation of authority at various levels of the organization. Delegation of authority refers to authorization of a manager to make certain decisions. Minimum possible managerial levels, this is another feature. As far as possible, there should be minimum managerial levels. Greater the number of managerial levels, longer is the line of communication in the chain of command. As a result, the communication has to travel along the line, creating problems of delay and disruption. Principle of unity of direction and command. Unless absolutely essential, the principles of unity of direction and the unity of command 
must be followed. Proper emphasis on staff. Line functions should be separated from staff functions and adequate emphasis must be placed on important staff activities. Provision for top management should be there. In the organization, it is imperative to provide some means by which the shareholder and members of the brand of the board of directors are able to participate in management process. Normally, the shareholders are indifferent so far as day-to-day -day management affairs of the company are concerned. When an organization structure is being planned, that what kind of structure an organization is going to follow, there are generally three approaches which are followed for that purpose. One of these approaches is the process approach. This approach puts emphasis on three aspects. The first one is the identification of various activities for implementing the strategy. Second aspect, no duplication should be there in the performance of activities. And thirdly, the performance of all activities should be in synchronized way. This approach is suitable only for the small organizations. Second approach is result approach. This approach is suitable when strategy innovation is the prime need. Business is defined on the basis of potential areas of market opportunities. The objectives to be achieved are fixed. The requirements for success and functional skills needed to meet these requirements are determined. The degree of authority is determined keeping in view the degree of centralization best suited to decision making. This approach is suitable only if the organization has one or few market opportunities. Third approach is decision approach. This approach is based on certain questions. First question is, what are the decisions that are required to obtain the results for achieving the organizational goals and objectives? What is the nature of such decisions? Such decisions should be made at what levels of organization? And what are the activities involved in or affected by such decisions? The answers to these questions will determine the degree of authority in a position, its interaction with other positions, and the placement of position in organizational hierarchy. What are various elements of organization structure? Well, there are six key elements that need to be addressed when designing an organization structure. One, work specialization. Work specialization is the degree to which tasks in the organization are subdivided into separate jobs. Second is departmentalization. It is the basis by which jobs are grouped together. Chain of command, the unbroken line of authority that extends from top of the organization to the lowest rank and it clarifies who reports to whom. Span of control, the number of subordinates a manager can direct effectively and efficiently. Then there is centralization or decentralization. The degree to which decision making is concentrated at a single point in the organization is centralization. Decentralization is when decision discretion is pushed down to the lower level implies. Then formalization. This is a degree to which jobs within the organization are standardized. We will discuss the elements of the organization structure one by one. First element is the work specialization. Work specialization means that the whole work of the organization should be divided among us the subordinates on the basis of qualifications, abilities and skills. To achieve this, the work of organization is divided into different tasks or functions, also called jobs. These activities are assigned to different people to be accomplished. This leads to a division of work, which in turn leads to specialization. Second element is departmentalization. Departmentalization is the process of classifying and grouping all the activities of an enterprise into different units and subunits. 
This is done to facilitate the functioning of all the activities efficiently for achieving the overall results of the organization. Departmentalization aims for 1. Specialization of activities 2. Simplification of the task of management within a workable span and 3. It aims to maintain the coordination and control of various activities. Why departmentalization is important for the organization? First is specification. Departmentalization helps to develop specification in various activities which leads to improving the efficiency of operation. Second is autonomy. Departmentalization provides independent charges of respective departments to managers. This autonomy brings satisfaction and increases their efficiency. Third is fixation of responsibility. As the authority and responsibility of each department is defined precisely through departmentalization, responsibilities of the work can be precisely and accurately fixed. Fixation of accountability. As the activities are well defined and responsibilities are clearly laid in a department, it becomes easy to fix the accountability for results. Then development of managers. The managers of each department perform specialized functions. Due to autonomy, they are able to take independent decisions and thus develop themselves for higher positions. Departmentalization facilitates good supervision and administrative control. This makes appraisals easier. Further, departmentalization facilitates successful operation of activities and creates an environment for effective performance. Grouping of activities and employees into departments also makes it possible to expand an organization to a large extent. Departmentalization increases effectiveness. It enables the organization to recapture some of the advantage of the small functional organization while minimizing the disadvantages of that, which comes with increasing size, diversity, and dispersion. Now, what are various bases for departmentalization? The first basis is the functional. Functional departmentalization is the simplest form of the departmentalization. Here, the grouping of departments is done on the basis of the functions such as production, finance, marketing, purchase, and personal. This is a diagram that explains that there is a CEO on the top and then there are various tasks which are combined in the form of function based on the form of various functions. Second is product-wise departmentalization. This departmentalization is done when there are several product lines and each line has a variety of items. In this, the grouping of activities is done on the basis of products manufactured in the organization. This is suitable in large organizations where different products are made. This diagram shows how the activities are grouped on the basis of the products. There is product manager dealing into soap division. Second is the product manager dealing into toothpaste. Third one, this product manager deals into blades. And the fourth one deals into milk powder. This is an example. Then we have territorial or geographical departmentalization. When activities of an organization are physically dispersed in different locations, territorial departmentalization is adopted. All activities related to a particular area are grouped together. This is most useful where the business is on national or international level. The example is Unilever India. It is a geographical department of Unilever. This is an example. Marketing manager, it heads the various departments. For example, manager, southern region. Manager Northern Region, Manager Western Region, and Manager Eastern Region. So here you have departmentalized according to the region. Customer-wise departmentalization. When the departments are formed to cater different kinds of customers, it is known as customer-wise departmentalization. 
customers may be classified according to their buying capacity or according to the nature of the wholesale or retail or export or government or general public now this diagram depicts the departmentalization according to the customers we have manager wholesaling manager who is catering only to the retailing then we have the manager who is catering only to the industrial customers and then we have the manager for the general customers process or equipment wise departmentalization this is another type of the departmentalization when the activities are grouped under the basis of production process or equipment involved this is the process wise or equipment wise departmentalization this type of departmentalization is most commonly used in a manufacturing unit and low level of enterprise such as textile oil in engineering and production industry the main objective of this type of departmentalization is to achieve efficiency and economy in operations this example is showing the departmentalization on the basis of the production process we have manager spinning in a textile division this is the example of a textile division spinning manager we have manager weaving then manager dyeing and then manager bleaching combined or composite departmentalization it is a hybrid which tries to combine the advantages of different types of departmentalization for example a combination of functional and product departmentalization this combination depends upon the suitability of the organization next we'll discuss chain of command chain of command is the hierarchy of authority in which those at the top level of the organization direct and control the activities of the organization members below them chain of command permits coordination of different individuals and groups engaged in task specialization in order to accomplish organizational goals the chain of command is usually depicted on an organizational chart which identifies the superior and subordinate relationships in the organizational structure the organizational chart allows one to visualize the lines of authority and communication within an organizational structure and ensures clear assignment of duties and responsibilities by utilizing the chain of command and its visible authority relationships the principle of unity of command that is each subordinate reports to one and only one superior is maintained while a properly functioning chain of command can establish effective coordination accountability and efficiency in the organizational operation there are certain drawbacks some theorists argue that since a chain of command tends to give lower level individuals little or no control there may be little job satisfaction which may result in low motivation organizations often respond by providing monetary rewards and encouraging competition for top level positions however according to ergiras these solutions create problems of their own such as low personal involvement and work or destructive competition between employees we will discuss the span of control the number of subordinates which should be put under one superior so that these can be handled and controlled effectively by a single manager is known as the span of control or span of management it helps to determine the degree of complexity of a manager's job and it defines the shape of an organization fewer are the number of people reporting to a manager larger is the number of managers who are required there are two types of the span of management one is wide span another is narrow span in wide span a manager supervises and controls a large number of subordinates wide span leads to a flat organizational structure with lesser number of managerial levels whereas the narrow span a manager supervises a selected number of employees at a time the work and authority is divided among us many subordinates narrow span leads to a tall structure with many 
levels of management. Now there are two outcomes of this span of management. One is the tall organizational structure and another is the flat structure. Tall structure is the result of narrow span. It provides close supervision, control and faster communication between the superior and the subordinate. The tall structure facilitates to develop specializations. But the flip side is that in tall structure, a superior tends to get involved in a subordinate's work. Secondly, many levels of management result into higher cost. Then, excessive distance exists between the top level and the lowest level. It leads to communication issues and coordination also becomes difficult. Another outcome is the flat structure. Flat structure is a result of wide span. In this, the superiors are forced to delegate, resulting in the less supervision. It facilitates better communication, better supervision, coordination, and also quick communication. But the flip side of the flat structure is that superiors are overloaded with work and there is tendency of superiors to become bottlenecks in decision making due to work overload. Now let us see what are various factors that influence the span of management. First factor is when managers are capable and aggressive, wide span is always helpful. When managers are submissive by nature, then narrow span is preferred. When the subordinates are capable and competent, efficient and trained, wide span is suitable. If the work is of repetitive nature, wide span of supervision is more helpful. If work requires very tight control and supervision, then narrow span is more helpful. Similarly, when the degree of decentralization is high, then wide span is preferred and a flat structure is helpful. But if the degree of decentralization is low, the opposite happens. That means the narrow span is preferred. More is the prevalence of face-to-face -face communication. More time will be consumed. Lesser people will be handled and narrow span shall be preferred. Likewise, lesser extent of face-to-face -face communication will lead to the requirements of wider span. More use of staff assistance means more free time available with manager. Hence, he can handle number of people. Here, wider span will be more useful. If a subordinate is receiving supervision from several other persons besides his direct superior, the workload of the manager will lessen and he will have more time for disposal. Hence, wider span of control will be more suitable. The next concept is centralization and decentralization. In centralization, the decisions regarding the work are made not by those doing the work, but by the higher authorities in the organization. An enterprise which follows uh, centralization need not have highly skilled subordinates. Centralization brings standardization of procedures and systems. It facilitates smooth working as it facilitates quick decision making. It also helps to keep all the departments of a company integrated. Centralization of decision making is indispensable in case of multi-units of an organization because it sustains the uniformity of action. If all the units are required to do the same thing in the same way, there must be centralization. But there are certain limitations of the centralization. For example, it increases the burden on the top executives and little time is left for attending to the other important functions of administration. It also hampers the growth and development of subordinates due to lack of authority to take independent decisions. Centralization tends to slow up the operations and it reduces the scope of specialization. Second is decentralization. It is opposite of centralization. Decentralization is basically an extension of delegation. Decentralization is concerned with the handing over of decision-making authority to the lower levels in managerial hierarchy. Decentralization relieves the top executives of the burden of performing various functions. It lessens their burden by giving decision-making power to the subordinates. 
the executives in the organization get the opportunity to develop their talents by taking initiative for decision making this improves their morale decentralization ensures better control and supervision it leads to quicker decision making of the lower level since decisions don't have to be referred up throughout the hierarchy decentralization grants more autonomy to lower level this helps the subordinates to do the work in the manner best suited for their department as all the managers and employees share the decision making powers this sharing integrates the employees as one team and develop team spirit among them decentralization also has a flip side for example under decentralization uniform policies and standardized procedures cannot be followed as each manager functions according to his requirements and talent it creates problems of coordination and control decentralization can be exercised only when people in the organization are intelligent capable and competent further it puts more pressure on the divisional heads to realize profits at any cost this creates stress and brings conflict among the managers next we will discuss about the concept of formalization formalization is the extent to which an organization's policies procedures job descriptions and rules are written and explicitly articulated formalized structures have many written rules and regulations employee behavior is controlled by using written rules and the employees have little autonomy to decision making formalization makes employee behavior more predictable in case of a problem employees know to turn to a procedure guidelines this leads to consistency of behavior even if formalization reduces ambiguity and provides direction to employees it also suffers from certain drawbacks a high degree of formalization leads to reduced innovativeness because employees are used to behave in a certain manner and a formalized structure is associated with reduced motivation as well as job satisfaction it is also associated with the slower pace of decision making lower level employees have limited power to resolve a customer problem and are constrained by stringent rules that outline a limited number of acceptable responses next we will talk about what are the determinants of organizational structure there are basically five determinants this includes strategy size people technology and environment strategy and structure they are closely linked ideally the structure should follow strategy structure should be designed for strategy implementation size an organization's size considerably influences its structure large organizations tend to have more specialization more departmentalization more vertical levels and more rules and regulations as compared to small organizations third is people skilled and professional people can be better managed by a structure that satisfies their need for autonomy less direction of control and power of decision making this structure will be different from the traditional one technology large batch productions have mechanistic structure the organic structure is more suitable for the firms having unit and small batch technology environment the firms operating in a static environment tend to have rigid structure whereas the firms operating in dynamic environment tend to have flexible and adjustable structure so students let us summarize what we have learnt in this module organization structure is a formal configuration between individuals and groups with respect to the allocation of tasks responsibilities and authority within the organizations structure has six core elements these are work specialization departmentalization chain of command span of control centralization decentralization and degree of formalization strategy size people technology and environment are five determinants of structure 
a good organization structure should be simple and flexible thank you